Hello, welcome to Handsome Griffin's occasional series in YouTube tutorials. Uh, today we're doing uh, MATLAB 1 and we're looking at oblique projection. So we're going to take an image that has taken at an oblique angle and we want to see can we uh, remove that oblique projection. Okay. So just to say that the source for this material is given where the mouse is pointed at, johnloomis.org whatever course that chap was giving and um, you know all the code is his, the image is his, you know, I'm just doing it because I think it's interesting. Okay. So uh, an oblique projection, uh, we're just going to do have a quick look at that. Uh, this slide, uh, I think I took that from Wikipedia again. Don't want to be doing anything. So we can see here, I'm not going to read it, the whole thing. Uh, the uh, projectors in oblique projection intercept the projection plane at an oblique angle to produce the projected image, as over here, as opposed to the perpendicular angle used in orthographic projection. So we we just go on a little bit here. That's just where it's used. It's sort of oblique projections are kind of gone. Here on the left we have an orthographic, and on the right we have an oblique projection. Okay. Uh, or to nor normality, we might get to that in a minute. So we have, this is from the original set of slides, we have, uh, there's our oblique picture. Uh, we have some control points here. So you know, John Loomis named this to be 0, 0, uh, this to be 11, 0, 11, 11, and not 11. And he, in this example, decreed that there was 80 pixels you know, per square of side. Okay, so we need to remember that. Uh, and there's some code here. So I might, rather than just jump to that, I might just go and run the code. And so we just go slowly at it here. So on line 5, we read in the image. And, uh, okay, so that's okay. Now, uh, we want to detect the control points. Now, if we go back to the set here, the control points he used in this example are these four points here. So what he did was he <coughs> said he got the coordinates of these points in the actual picture, and the coordinates of those points in the actual pictures. There's the column, and there's the row. Okay. So that's how he did it. So zero zero is three forty nine eight hundred. Twelve oh seven seven seventy three is eleven zero. Eleven eleven is one oh one two four sixty six, and uh, zero eleven is four thirty six four seventy six, and then he's defined the base here. So not eleven. Uh, oh, I might have actually said it wrong. Sorry, not eleven. Sorry, not 11 corresponds to these two. 11, 11 corresponds to 1207 and 773. 11, 0 corresponds to 1012, 466. And 0, 0 corresponds to 436 and 476. Now, he just hardwired them in lines 28 and lines 29. So, but, you know, you would have to use um, some way of doing that. Now, I mentioned that here. If you actually knew the square, you could do... Um, control point to transform okay uh, but I would use ROI poly that's region of interest polynomial but I just left it the way it was because we just hardwired the code now just to clear what I said 0 11 349 11 11 11 12 and 0 0 4 and you know by now if you experience match MATLAB user that the apostrophe is for a transform. So that's a row vector. So when you put the column, that makes it into a column vector. Okay, now, this is the nice thing about MATLAB. Everything really follows on this line. CP to CP to T form, control point to transform. And so it'll do the transform for you. You say to see in the row, the columns in the row, which we've defined above, the base by 80, the base is there, 0, 11, 11, 0, and we just multiply it by 80. 
this we've decreed that there's 80 pixels between each um, corner of a square and we were doing a projective okay uh, so all this happening lines 39 40 41 it's 42 is just displaying the transform okay uh, by the way uh, tf here is a struct um, and we might look at that when we run it and then we might there. so I tell you what let's just copy and paste from that lot in and just see what happens so there's the original image and so that's the only thing sorry that one the one on the right here is from that so that's all we've done so far let's go back to the prompt so uh, we've got TF so that's the transform that's the struct so and then we said T is TF dot T dot dot T so that's there so that is the transform okay that is the transformation matrix so and TF dot T dot dot T is this lot but on this line here we said t equals tf data dot t just to tf dot data dot t is part of a struct so we just want it on that line here just to make it a simple array like we did there hope that's okay okay so I copy and paste that next bit so let's just I might just put a little figure in here Oh no, we want to overlay it, sorry, I leave that because if I say figure we're going to draw a new figure. So it's the image we're going to that so that we want that and we want to overlay the control points on that. So we do that with hold on, that means hold the image that's there, and then we just draw red uh we line with it too and we just draw uh the colour around there okay so and we set the color of the various points so let's just have a little look at that bit and there we have there we've drawn the red line around to emphasize the 11 by 11 square and we've put in the 0 11 11 11 it's a bit faint oh sorry that's not 11 11 that's a zero zero there, that's eleven zero there, that's eleven eleven and that's zero eleven. Okay, just to emphasize that. Uh again, remember in imaging the top left is zero zero. So the top left as I were of our control points is there. Okay, and the bottom right is down here with eleven eleven. Okay. There we're just getting we're just writing that uh, overlay frame to file okay so IMG we get the frame and then we're writing it to file I am right G that's the uh, the image with the red lines drawn around it now <coughs> here we're going to execute the transform so there is a I am show so there is the um shall we say the um, the transformed image okay okay so we did that we did the image transformation there and now we're going to do a bare bones and this is kind of nice here coming up
So just looking at so that's the original with the whole thing in blue and then the area of interest is in red. <coughs> and how we did that was we defined some boundary points with just the size of the original image. We filled that <coughs> with blue <coughs> there. So we filled the boundary points, all the rows in the first column, comma all the rows in the second column with blue. We held that on, in other words we kept that, and then we filled C and R, and remember C and R are those uh, points up here. We filled them with red, so we filled them with red, sorry, we get that there, which I think is kind of neat. Now. What we want to do is we want to show the transform simplified image. Okay, I just did T form forward. Okay, so I just cut and paste out of you. If you've never met it before, you might have to go and look up the MATLAB for help. So here we go. And there's the transformed again with that um, you know, almost vertical view. Okay, so you can see then that the blue is the transformed there, and there's the original, uh, well, not the original red, there's the red. You know, the 0, 0 is there, and the 11, 11 is there. Uh, if you're not too hot and the homogeneous, this is a little tricky but we just want to make sure that the mapping worked so we just wanted to make sure we just showed here we got the UV so we had the points of all the rows columns 1 to 2 divided by all the rows uh, in the predicted points in column 3 and we replicated it so if you don't know what RepMath is, you'll have to look that up. RepMath is short for Replicate Matrix, so you'd have to do that individually. But you can see here that we get a perfect mapping of the points. And then finally, we just... We carry out the transform. We define the data limits. Yeah, we want to say we hardwired that in, so we want to you know, give it. You know, don't go beyond those um, set points there. And we're transforming the image with TF, and TF is the transform that we got way up there somewhere. Sorry, I have to find the script here. TF is somewhere I can't. TF is there on line 38. Let's have a look, and there's our final image. Okay, so hope that's of help to you if you're into oblique projections. Okay, thanks very much. Thanks for listening.